Troy Balderson would say that some of the best ideas for change at the State House come from the people and businesses back in his home district. In fact, he's working on a bill right now that would do just that, make it easier for businesses to operate in Southeast Ohio. Troy Balderson is this week's Caucus Conversation. Senator Balderson, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me today, John. So independent pharmacies make up a pretty, num a pretty big number of small businesses in Ohio. In fact, one of your colleagues, um, uh, Senator Burke, is an independent pharmacist. Yes. You, you've got a bill specifically related to uh, uh, pharmacy audits. Can you explain what that is? Um, it, was, it was pretty interesting. Uh, this was brought to me by a constituent in my district uh, probably about two years ago is when we started working on this. And uh, the small business owner said some of the demands that he was under during an audit process. And he understands that, you know, part of business is that he is going to be audited by people. Uh, but what we were trying to put in place is some rules and regulations and some standards that they were able to go by and that the auditors, the PBMs, could also go by when they come in to audit these small pharmacies. Uh, so what's what's the hang up? Is there are there some issues right now with it? Um, there's no issues with it right now. Um, the bill should be completed here in the next couple of weeks. Um, it is currently right now serving in the Senate Insurance and Financial Institutions Committee. Uh, we've had all the hearings, so hopefully it has passed out here within the next two weeks. And from what I understand is when you go to a pharmacy to get a prescription, um, you're, you know, the, obviously the pharmacy doesn't have all of this stuff at their disposal. They're getting the, the medicine and everything from these large organizations that are what we're, the ones that we're talking about coming in to do these audits, correct? Um, kind of, but what the, the main reason for this audit was for was because of the clerical error. So if there's, there's errors in that process when that exchange happens, uh, that's, that was the biggest culprit of this. Okay, so if you go to get a prescription and it's maybe the wrong, a wrong date or the instructions aren't written on there properly, that, that could be a problem for not only the pharmacist, but maybe the person who's taking Correct. the meds. Correct, it, it is also a problem for the person taking the meds. And it's not about how many pills are in the bottle, it's all clerical. Well, let's, let's move on uh, from, to a broader issue from pharmacy to just business in general in this state. Uh, we've talked a number of times with a number of senators about our top priority, creating jobs, mm -hmm. economic development, uh, workforce development. Senate Bill 1, which was our priority piece of legislation, you co-sponsored that bill, which is a workforce development bill. Can you talk a little bit about that? I can't talk a lot about that. Um, that bill was jointly uh, sponsored with Senator Bill Beagle. Uh, Bill and I worked very hard on this along, amongst other people, but um, this has been very important. Uh, it's been amazing how widely it's been accepted and the demand for it. Now we are still going through some pieces to that and getting it set up, but it's a $25 million revolving loan fund. And what we're trying to incorporate is small business owners and small business companies to work with local schools, whether it's vocational schools, whether it's tech colleges, a four-year program could also. But our main tar target is the vocational program and the tech colleges. Uh, it's to get these businesses to go to the educators and say, this is what we need, this is what you need to start teaching our young adults, our adults, our veterans, uh, someone in the workforce that wants to uh, learn a different trade. Uh, so that was the encouragement to get the businesses and the educators involved in working together. And it has, uh, it's been amazing of how highly uh, motivated this has been. Uh, where I'm from in the eastern part of Ohio, the oil and gas industry is very big. Uh, the workforce development, the job uh, issues that are there are very high demand, and we do not have the workforce there ready to do these jobs. Uh, it's becoming a lot more technical, too. I mean, these, there's still a lot of manual labor involved, but you've got to really understand your technology. There, there's a lot of manual, involve, uh, manual labor involved, and yes, it gets very cold this winter when you're out there running pipe, but uh, it's what's inside that's going on, the technology that's there is now, the, the stethoscopes that are on the, on the rigs that are actually running down into the ground. So um, it's, it's becoming very high tech. Um, welding is also a huge issue. Uh, that's a very high job demand right now. Um, several uh, of the two-year colleges in, in Eastern Ohio are offering welding classes. Uh, now you are to the point where the vocational schools are also doing it. But my, you know, one of my success stories is that there's a business down in Marietta, Ohio, that has, is getting four or five students from one of the vocational schools and getting them down there and paying them to actually work on site and then to train as they go. So that's kind of what we want to implement. That's some real-world real world experience. Um, 
So the, the governor has talked about in the, in the MBR that mm -hmm. is now out and the House is looking at it right now. But part of that, and I, I know it's something we've talked about in the Senate too, is you know, in addition to growing jobs and training the workforce, you got to have a, a strong educational system. And, part, and one of the things that has been talked about is um, introducing vocational um, you know, programs as you know, further down the line in, in, in middle school now. Um, do you see, what kind of advantage do you see that being for this type of work in Eastern Ohio, anywhere in Ohio? I think we, we have shown some disrespect to the trade industry as far as allowing our students, allowing people to work with their hands. And, and your hands guarantee you a job as long as you work with hands. And I think we stereotype these young kids that you know, when, when they're coming up that you have to be a mathematician or an engineer, and we're not all fit to be that. Uh, I come from a vocational background uh, working on vehicles, working on farm machinery, uh, power alignment. I mean, these are the jobs that you have immediate return on investment. Uh, these kids are hired, whether they're power alignment, whether they're mechanics, uh, and, and, and they're making $18, $19 an hour right out of school. So I think we should you know, cherish the time that we have with these young students and to work with them and, and, and give them the encouragement that they need that, you know, just because you're out here at a vocational program, you're guaranteed a job. Well, whether it's your hands or with your feet, you're a pretty active guy. You like to get out and about. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, I walk around the state house with a with a cup of water. This guy walks around with a milk jug full of water. Um, and, and I know you're a fairly avid cyclist. Mm -hmm. um, when you're riding, I'm guessing you're wearing a helmet. Absolutely, uh, <laughs> a helmet has saved my life more than once. Uh, and you know, in in my time before the position I'm in now, and I try to also now when I have time, and I try to make time to do that, but. Uh, encourage young kids to start wearing their helmets, but also the kids, but the parents, to implement to the parents how important it is for their kids to have helmets. Um, you're seeing a trend now to where it's cool to wear a helmet, uh, even whether they're skiing or riding their bikes, riding their skateboard, that's what we have to keep uh, pushing is, is that it is cool and it could save your head and your head's a very valuable asset. You can't go to vocational school without your mind. So uh, well, you definitely need that. And, and March is Brain Injury Awareness Month, which is one of the reasons why we're talking about this. But in addition to this month, you've also designated a special day in Ohio for, for brain injury awareness. Talk a little bit about that. Um, it was, uh, there's a constituent also in my district uh, that I, I knew her mom and dad and I was aware of her situation. It's a great story. Her name is Micah Jones. Uh, and she was in her senior year at Nashville going to school, very talented uh, musician, uh, and she was going across the crosswalk and was hit by a drunk driver. Um, she was unconscious for probably a little over three months, and she had a traumatic brain injury. And she has worked her way back up to where she's pretty well functioning now. Um, she does have a part-time job now, but she has started this organization called the Brain Song Foundation. And she is raising money and, and raising awareness of what the traumatic brain injury is. And we designated July 9th as her day uh, here in the Senate with Senate Bill 247. Uh, and with her encouragement, we, we got that done. And she has, she's, this will be her third year to have her annual event. And they come from all over the state of Ohio to Zanesville, Ohio to support Micah. Well, it's a great story, and thanks so much for bringing it to our attention. And thanks for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us as well. As always, you can keep up to date with us every day on our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. The address is at Ohio Senate GOP. Or visit our website, ohiosenate.gov Republicans. Thanks for watching.